Hello and thank you for watching another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Today I have a Pioneer uh, GMD 9601. This is a Class D mono amplifier for you. So the customer states it's going into protection. So let's uh, let's see what the cause is on this. So we'll flip it over here. And I already took the uh, transistor spreaders off for you guys to save you from the boring part of turning a screwdriver and pulling those things off um so this is uh this is your typical gm amplifier they use the 3205s in the power supply they use the 4227s the rfb 4227s in the output it uses the irs 2092 drive ic right here to drive the outputs it uses a standard tl 494 over here to drive the power supply and then from there you have your various your rectifiers over here and your voltage regulation over here for your preamp section here so it's just another typical uh, class d layout goes through your uh, output inductor through your filtering capacitors and then out the output terminals really simple setups once you understand how these class d's work they all do the same process they're the same thing they take a sine wave and they convert it to a square wave and then they modulate the square wave and it spits out your output for you so let's go ahead and fire up my meter here and of course i'm just going to use resistance i'm just going to check the power supply 4.2 4.7 k between the gate and source, 4.7, 4.7. Typically, when I see a problem, I'll find between gate and source an issue. Um, gate and drain, gate and drain, gate and drain. So, power supply is good. Power supply should fire right up if we take care of whatever the issue is that's making it go into protect here. Uh, so, let's check the 4227s here. So, these are MOSFETs also, so gate and source 4.7, gate source 4.7, 4.7, uh, 29.6 ohms. Well, there's a problem right there. 29.6 ohms and ah, 0.81 ohms. This transistor right here has a direct short. And that was just, again, me using resistance, uh, just a simple, quick process. I don't have to wait for no, the, no beeps. I don't have any annoying beeps going on. and uh, It's just a quick way for me to do it. It's just my way to do it. And I'm not telling you to do it that way. It's just how I do it. Um, so between drain and source, uh, I got 1.5 ohms. So this transistor here is obviously defective, probably is what is resulting in the readings of these other uh, 4227s and these are in banks of threes so three and three uh, when it comes to how they're being driven so oh, I should fire up my close-up camera because if uh, if if you're able to look down in here this transistor has been replaced this has definitely been worked on before so someone has cut the source legs of these two they lifted them they replaced this transistor and they soldered this transistor back in from the top so So they didn't take the board out and replace uh, the transistor. They just cut the old one out, soldered the new one in on the top. Now this goes back to the other Pioneer GM board that I did. Sure, we all have our gripes. But, come on now. It takes two minutes to pull this board out. Literally. You pull the spreaders, and I've got 
just a couple screws here that you can see that's holding the board down. And this whole board will lift right out of here. Take your desoldering tool, desolder the three pins, replace your transistor. It's really not that hard. I'm not saying that that's incorrect, but that's just not very professional to do it that way. But I see that a lot, and I like to be professional and very thorough on what I do. And of course, they are not matched at all. So this is a... I can't even read that transistor. It's a completely different... Oh, there we go. So it is an international rectifier IRB4227, but just the stamp on the top is not standard or typical for an international rectifier stamp. So, well, what would I question? I'd question that transistor that got put in. If it were me, I would have pulled all three of those out and replaced those with all three new transistors. I guess, and I got a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of friction on the last amplifier where I stated, I said, come on, Pioneer, and I would, I'd swear that it was from the factory that they used mismatched parts. But really, if you think about the load that these three transistors are put under, when people, you know people drive these amplifiers into the ground, so you, these three transistors are under tremendous stresses. And they have to share the stresses. If you have one transistor that is not matched to the other two, that transistor is going to heat up. Just bottom, I mean, that's just common sense when it comes in to parallel transistors. You have to understand and realize the loads that these are put under. Now, amplifiers that are put under really minimal loads, like 25 watt amplifiers you may be able to get away with mismatched transistors because there's not a lot of load behind it but come on guys what kind of wattage are they pulling out of these gm amplifiers a lot for what they are yeah you're pulling all that through three transistors remember they're in banks three here and three here a high side and a low side if you're to look at the data sheet for the irs 29 or 2092 so keep that in mind is this acceptable in my world? No, it's not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the board. Actually, you know what? First off, as you can see here, I do have 12 volts hooked up. Let's, let's cut that transistor out and see if I lose my short. And we'll see if this uh, board actually powers up. Let me get the meter here. 4.7 and are we looking good 4.7 yep and 4.7 uh, that was between the gate and source uh, 6.1 and climbing that's going to be charging the capacitors 7 charging and then is the other bank charging yep the other bank is charging so these are looking the same here I'm going to bet as long as the drive is still okay, which I think it is because I'm not showing any shorts. Um, I'd have to pull the data sheet up on the uh, 2092. But I'm going to bet money that this will start. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the power supply on. Let me find my probe here real quick. Let's uh, get the scope up there for you guys too. Let's see what this thing does. Um, I got to make sure all your potentiometers are in the counterclockwise position. Let's see how far the gain was up on this. Oh yeah, almost all the way up. Yeah, so be driven right into clipping. It's okay. All right, let me see. We got a red light here. Let me check the gate drive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So as you can see there, we do have power supply gate drive there. And I do have a blue light. 
So we have a excellent power supply drive here getting pulled right to ground, which is good, good and square. Now let's check the uh, output transistors here. So you're going to have your low side, and there's your low side switching right there for you. And then you should have rail to rail. There it is, rail to rail. So the drive itself survived, looking good. Um, of course, I'm going to still have to check with an input signal to make sure that the preamp is okay. But otherwise, the output on this is fine. So what I'm going to do as a uh, tech is replace those three transistors with three matched transistors. Keyword here is matched. To help prevent any future failures of this amplifier. So and then I'm going to uh, put it back together, get an input signal on here, and make sure that the preamp uh, area is still functional. So I will get this out of the heat sink. I will get those three pulled, get three new transistors put in, and I will be right back with you. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. I do have the three transistors replaced here with new uh, IRB4227s here. And, um, oh, I did want to go over something real quick. As I was cleaning up the flux, as I do, keep things clean. Uh, let me flip this over here for you guys. So, I was... This is kind of ironic because it's this just goes to show how easy it is. It's easy to overlook something when you do this uh, just repetition. But I was cleaning the flux right, right over here. And I saw these two black spots here. And I was like, what? Like, what the heck is that? So I flip it over. Oh, let me not twist up my wires here. So I, I flip the board over and I noticed here on the uh, remote base boost connection that uh, the resistors here are completely cooked it burnt it burnt this right it burnt the resistor right off the board right here so it's safe to assume that the line between the amplifier and the control knob somewhere in the vehicle got shorted out because this is this is a result of being a, a direct short in, in that line somewhere in there that shorted it out probably shorted this out sent this into just full base boost and sent it into clipping it's it's hard to say but i'm going to bet money at some point that this was the cause of one of the original fa failures this board's been serviced i think a few times because the board has been out before but yet the one transistor was soldered in from the top so i think it's been apart more than once so i'm going to address this issue uh once i verify that the drive itself is okay so let's go ahead and fire up this power supply here red light it's going to flash a few times as it builds rail voltage because this is just a two amp power supply that i use here And then the red light turns to a blue light. Excellent. So we got the scope. We do have the scope. So here's the new transistors, the drive on the new transistors, the rail to rail drive looking excellent. And the negative rail drive looking great. So drive wise, we're looking good. That's without an input signal. So that's with no modulation. So this is where we're going to see if that remote base boost has uh, damaged the preamp. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up a, a 50 hertz input signal here. And let's see if we have proper modulation of the uh, Class D drive circuit here. So it's either going to go into protection um, or it's just not going to output anything at all. Let's see if it survived. Blue light. So it doesn't go into protection. So that's good. So let me see, do we have a modulated? Oh, we sure do. So if you look on the scope there, 
you'll see that the line uh, it's it's kind of squiggly as I would like to say and that is uh, that's going to be your modulation of that class D circuit so I should see that 50 Hertz signal on the output terminal of the amplifier so let me find it here and uh, let me change the time base and there is there's that 50 hertz signal nice clean no issues on that on that signal it looks good let me change it let's see here oh 500 hertz it's not going to work because this is a class d so let's go to 90 hertz 80 hertz Forty hertz, looking great. So, so we're looking really good on that signal there. So I think uh, I'll go ahead and get that replaced. And like I said, it has a clean output signal. So that's all this this was the uh, the two zero nine two that IRS two zero nine two survived the failure of the output. Uh, just three output transistors, of course. I replace them in parallel. Um, if you don't, it's up to you. Uh, that's what I do. I limit my chances of this coming back from uh, a failed transistor from uh, differences in load sharing. So that's what I do. Um, power supply is good. 3205s. And I don't see any signs that they've been really hot. They have definitely been a little warm. Uh, but again, these amplifiers get driven super hard. So that doesn't surprise me. So, uh, and another thing to cover here is uh, before I button an amplifier up, I always check to make sure that I don't have any loose transformers, loose inductors. And I don't know if you can hear this, but that one winding that's sticking up right here. Um, could wear through from vibration damage so what I do is I take a little bit of glue glue that winding down make sure the transformers glued down it does wiggle around a little bit so I'm going to glue that in place this inductor does wiggle around uh, one of the common failure points of these GM amplifiers is this inductor here because it does wiggle around so I will put glue underneath of it to keep it from uh, rocking back and forth from vibration damage Output capacitors are going to get glued down. This one over here by the terminals. And the uh, input inductor. So other than that, uh, that's typical for these boards. I uh, do thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, leave them uh, down below there. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.